Hey my squidlings, it's Katie here and welcome back to my channel. So today you're getting a versus video. This was requested by one of you guys um, and whoever it was, I don't remember the username, I apologize. They asked if I could do the Canson Pro Layout marker paper versus the render paper. Now I'm actually going to go a step further and do the render paper and you will notice that this is a smaller size. This is actually a sample size that was sent to me by Art Snacks, but I figured it would do the job just fine. It's the same paper, just a smaller size. Um, and then here is the Canson Pro Layout Marker Paper. And then they also have the Canson XL Marker Paper, which seems to be basically the same, but we're going to test it out and see if it really is. And of course we're going to be doing it versus render. Now I do have videos on each of these separate things and I will link them up here in the card uh, so you can check out the specific video for them. But this is just going to be comparing the differences. I probably won't be doing an illustration of any sort. It's just going to be a comparison. Uh, if you want to purchase any of these products, I will leave a link down in the description below to, you know, so you can do so. This item was purchased to me and these two were sent to me as samples from the Canson company a long time ago. Um, but, and I still have some left. So yeah, uh, let's just get right into the comparison and we are going to start out with the Canson paper. So first off we have the XL marker paper. It is 18 pounds or 70 GSM, semi-transparent, bright white, best use is marker, pen, and ink, and it's good for pencil. Then we have the Pro Layout Marker, which is also 18 pounds or 70 GSM. It is semi-transparent, smooth surface, bleed proof to alcohol and solvent felt markers. Best use is pencil, pen and ink, and marker. So we have the XL Marker Paper on the left and the Canson Pro Layout Marker uh, on the right. And I am just going to get a few utensils. So I'm going to get my pencil, some various liners some different kinds of markers and yeah so let's just go ahead and get on with the test now I am going to remove the XL marker paper we're going to do the Canson Pro layout first uh, and I am just going to kind of make some marks I'm just gonna mark this paper up so we've got pencil and I want to see how this erases so I'm gonna make like a gradient of some kind And then we're going to see how it erases. Let's just erase the dark part. So this paper erases pretty cleanly. The only thing I think I would mention to you while erasing is this paper is extremely, extremely thin. So you want to be careful while erasing and hold it down because you don't want to crinkle your paper or even rip it because that is definitely a possibility. So, next up, I'm going to be using a multitude of different liners. This is a Pigma brush pen, um, and I'm just going to make some marks. And on this paper, it looks really crisp. I like the lines. Um, it doesn't seem to feather out. I'm also going to be using this Stabilo Point 88 Fine Point 04 pen uh, to see what this looks like. And yet again, there's no feathering, which is always a good thing. And then last, I'm going to be using this Kuretake Furego Koche pen, um, and yeah. Uh, and that one is really nice on this paper. It's very nice and dark. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but they all look really, really good on this paper. Next up, I'm going to be testing this Koi Coloring Brush pen. Uh, it is water-based, so I want to go ahead and disclaimer that. I just want to see what it looks like on here, more or less, uh, and it looks like a normal red pen. Now, to kind of push my limits, I'm going to be using this clear Tombow ABT marker uh, and kind of see if I can push this around without damaging the paper. Alright, so with repeated use, I don't know if you can see that little black speck, but um, it's ripping the paper up a little bit and I'm trying to get this off there we go so water-based markers are probably going to be a no-go on this paper only because of the fact that it's going to peel the paper now I've got a Copic Chow marker here 
And I'm going to be testing that. Actually, I'm going to get a couple more of these. Actually, we're going to go with the oranges this time. I showed you a green, but we're going to go with oranges. And I'm going to blend both light into dark and dark into light just to see how the paper handles the different tones. So first, I'm going to go dark into light. One thing I think a pet peeve of mine is with the thinner marker papers is that when you lay a down color, the color looks off because it's reflecting whatever is underneath because it, you know, it's thin so the paper thins out. You have to wait for it to dry to see the true color. Now as I'm speaking to you, it is drying so it doesn't look as bad, but that is what it looks like just from dark to light. Um, I definitely don't think you get the greatest blend, but that just might have been the colors I was using or the method I was using. So now I'm going to blend light into dark. Alright, so before it dries, I will honestly say that I like the gradient, but I don't like how the ink just kind of sits on top. I'm not a fan of that because it gets smeary. Um, and yeah, so on the back you can see that it doesn't bleed through at all even though I put a lot of layers on. So it does do what it's supposed to do, you know, it's not supposed to bleed through and it does its job well. Um, however, I feel like it's not the marker paper for me. It's too thin. It's too, like the ink sits on too much on top. I would rather it soak in so I can put more layers down and stuff like that. But that's just my personal preference. Um, so that was the Canson Pro Layout marker paper. Now let's move on to the XL marker paper and see if it's any different. Alright, so here is the XL marker paper and we are going to again start out with pencil. And I'm just going to write pencil up here and just make some lines and see if they're erasable. Yet again, as long as you don't press very hard, this paper does erase pretty well. Uh, again, like with the Pro Marker paper, you're going to want to hold it down if you're going to erase on this paper because you don't want to rip or crease this paper because it's very, very thin. Alright, so I'm going in with the Stabilo pen and we're just going to make some lines. Yet again, there's no feathering. Then the Pigma pen. It's also pretty crisp. And then last but not least, the Kuretake Fure Gokoche pen. And essentially these are pretty much the same paper with a different name. At least that's what it seems like to me. Uh, but I could be wrong, maybe they're formulated a little differently, but they work almost the exact same so far. So next we are going to go in with the Koi Coloring Brush Pen, and I'm just going to make some colors. I'm going to see if I can blend it out with this Tombow Marker. Uh, yet again, you may not be able to see, but it pilled a little bit up here, um, so this is definitely not the paper for water-based markers. Now again, we are going to try with the Copic markers, and I'm going to go light to dark first this time. Uh, yet again, the complaint kind of stays the same with the pro, like with this paper as with the pro layout marker paper. The ink kind of sits on top and it moves around a little bit too easily and so it makes it a little streaky. The blend is fine, but it's just, it definitely doesn't work for the style I like to color with because I prefer dark to light. I am going to test that, but I'm pretty sure it's just going to end up the same way as with the marker paper, um, the pro layout marker paper. So just comparing, this is the Pro Layout Marker Paper, this is the XL Paper, and the XL Paper actually seems to blend the markers a little bit better. Um, that's just my personal opinion. You can kind of make your own assumptions based on what you see. Uh, so I mean, if you're going to have to pick one of these two papers, I would definitely prefer the XL. I would recommend that one to you. But, as a whole, I'm not a big fan of thin marker paper, so 
if you don't have to buy this, I really wouldn't, unless this is the kind of look you're going for, then I say go for it. But just, I prefer a thicker paper that's going to soak up my ink a little bit more, because that's just how, what I like to work with. And then also as the test, as I was showing, um, here is the XL paper, and of course it didn't bleed through at all. None of the inks did. So, yeah, let's move on to the render paper. Alright, so this is the render paper. Now, like I said, I have a tiny booklet. It's definitely a lot smaller than a regular sketchbook. But we're going to go ahead and do the test as we did with all of the other mediums. I'm going to put pencil down here. And we are just going to see how well it erases. It erases decently well. I definitely wouldn't recommend pr pressing very hard on your pencil just because it will leave marks. Uh, now in with the Pigma brush pen. Um, and so far there is no bleeding or feathering. Uh, now the Stabilo pen. Ooh, the Stabilo pen looks a lot better on this paper. It looks a lot more crisp. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it looks really good. And then we have the Kuretake Furigo Kochu pen. And I think it looks just as good. This one feathers a little bit. You probably won't be able to see that but it does feather just the slightest bit. All right, next I'm going to try this Koi coloring brush pen and try to blend it out with the um, Tombow. Now it doesn't blend out very well and yeah, as the more I do, the more it tears. You can definitely see that. So I would not recommend water-based media, at least not in pen form. I have used watercolor on this paper before, and as long as you're not scrubbing at it, it works just fine. But since I was trying to get this, like, move the pigment around with this pen, uh, it just ripped the paper. <laughs> Alright, next up we're going to be doing Copics as with the other one, and I'm going to be doing dark to light first. So I am just going to lay in my colors. Now I have this complaint with the Pro Layout Marker Paper, but there should be no excuse for this. I don't know why it does it, and I've seen it with other people's artwork as well, that when you lay down a lighter color, it shows down a little bit different, and I don't know why. As it dries, it comes up a little bit more normal, but it does lay down a little bit darker than with like if you were going on a white paper or something. So when this dries, it'll look a lot different, but if you're using exclusively render paper, I would definitely have a uh, swatch like sheet somewhere else just so you know what color it's going to dry as. And now I'm going to do light to dark. Alright, so personal opinion with the render marker paper, um, I don't like how it blends light to dark. I feel like it's extremely streaky. It does start to pile up on top, which was a surprise for me. But if I blended light to, or dark to light, it worked just fine. Um, so that's just personal opinion. Of course, with the render no show through paper, it really doesn't show through. Um, I think that's the main difference to me is the fact that with the render paper you definitely are guaranteed to be able to use both sides because unless I think it's like a xylene pen, um, it will not show through at all. I mean you can abuse the paper and it's not going to show through. Uh, with the Canton Pro Layout Marker it's so thin that you really don't want to use both sides. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, if I am rating these, I definitely would, like if I'm going out and buying and I have an option between the Canton Pro Lap Marker or the Excel paper versus this paper, I would definitely pick up a thing of render paper just because of the fact that number one, it's a thicker paper. You can use both sides. I never said the thickness, I don't think. This is um, 110 pounds and 180 GSM, acid-free and lignin-free heavyweight and you can use with all media which I think is really cool so I feel like render doesn't limit you as much as the Canson Pro marker layout paper is 
Pro layout marker paper, and but those are just exclusively for markers as well. This is multimedia paper, so I feel like it's a little unfair to compare them exclusively. But if we're just looking at markers and inks and pencils, um, I still think the render paper wins out, just because I think the thicker paper wins, in my opinion. Now, like I said, by all means, you know you're gonna have your own opinion on this as well. You might like the thinness of the Canson paper, or you might like how it lays down markers or how it takes ink. And I will say that, you know, with the Canson paper, the um, Fudeco Kochi pin did not feather as it did with the render paper. So, you know, you always want to keep in mind, test your supplies on whatever papers you have, see how they take it, whether you like it, whether you hate it, and you kind of really have to base your own opinion on whatever paper you're using on what you like to do. Um, so I would definitely recommend testing as many papers as you definitely can, unless you have found the one. Um, I feel like this render paper is a very good, I feel like I'm trying to sell you the render paper, but it was just a versus. Um, I, bottom line, I like the render paper a little bit more, but you know, that's all based on my opinions. So I really hope you guys like this versus video. It's my first one, and I don't plan on doing any more unless you guys want to see more. If you do, Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you would like to see pitted up against each other. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. Also, don't forget to join our cute little squid pod if you haven't already to keep updated on when I upload a new video. And until next time, guys, toodaloo!